In a recent video, I showed how some of the 100 watt LEDs being shipped from China that have 10 parallel rows of 10 series LEDs are not very good because they have a lot of defective LEDs in them. And I showed how when you test them at lower current, uh, there are quite a lot of chips out at the low current and other ones that are running very bright suggesting that the others are leaking current through to make them uh, glow bright at that uh, level. And uh, it caused quite a lot of quite blunt feedback from LED experts uh, implying that the reason they hadn't all lit properly was because I didn't give it a hundred watts. And someone went as far as actually calling me a clown. Nice. So um, here's Coco the Clown's Guide to Shit 100 Watt LEDs. So let's take a look, just an example. These are three individual 1 watt LEDs and this is a brand new, not on, a, not on an anti-static surface, but it is brand new nonetheless. Um, it's a brand new 1 watt LED. So let's do a little scientific experiment here. Let's measure the resistance of the LED. Now, you wouldn't normally measure resistance of LEDs. Now, let's see, is this meter going to show up all right? It's going to show okay-ish, I think. Let's move it over. That's better. So, if I measure the resistance of this brand new LED, putting the positive lead of the meter onto the positive leg and the negative onto the negative leg, it shows no leakage at all. It shows a very, very high resistance. And this is good. Because technically speaking, it's a semiconductor junction and shouldn't conduct. There should be, if anything, there should be a really minute leakage current under when voltage was applied across it. Uh, until, of course, you reach the forward voltage of the LED, then it would actually uh, conduct properly and it would light. And I can actually show that lighting at very... No, actually, you know what? Let's go on to the next part of the experiment here. Because these are three crappy LEDs in a, sadly, from Poundland uh, LED uh, GU10 lamp. And if I do the same test again, and I put the meter on, then this LED shows a resistance of about 2.6 mega ohms. That's not bad. This LED shows a resistance of just 120 ohms. And if I uh, go on to, well, let's do the last LED then, and we'll see what it measures. It measures about 64k, which isn't great, but you know, it's certainly better than the 120 ohms of this one. Now, if I measure the other one, change the polarity, and measure it, this one still comes out at 120 ohms. Now, the reason the LED is showing resistance when it shouldn't be is because it's faulty. And if you consider that uh, when you look at an LED through a microscope uh, or even a magnifying glass and you look at the chip, you usually see either just one electron at one corner and one at the other with the wires jumping off, the little welds. And sometimes you see two wires coming out at one side and two going off the other. And when you look at it, it looks as though it's just connecting to one side of the film and then the other side, it looks very simple. But in reality, it's not simple at all. This is what you're seeing when you look from the top. You're looking down that way and there's one of the electrodes, a chrome nickel gold uh, spot welding point. That's what the little uh, the wire would be tacked onto. And the matching one here that's actually much lower down in the substrate. It's not that much lower down because these layers here are literally thousandths of a millimetre thick. They're, they're micrometres thick. They're really tiny, like fractional of a human hair. And these are the uh, layers that form the actual junction of the LED, the semiconductor junctions. So you've basically, when, when the, the current is applied across these two electrodes, this one's on this surface and it conducts across and then the current flows. Uh, this is then other conductive layer and the current flows through these semiconductor layers, making it light up and the light is visible from the top. However, these very thin layers are quite easily damaged, either during manufacture 
or static damage. You know, you could just get a, a spark. It, it, this, it, keep in mind, this is really exaggerated, but a tiny, a static spark could just blow a hole right through all those layers. It's a very tiny area. And likewise, uh, even in manufacturing, you could, fissures and cracks can appear in these layers. And I suppose, technically speaking, the process of welding these fairly chunky wires on in the high-power LEDs could also actually cause sort of localised damage underneath. And when that happens, you end up with a situation where, instead of having a nice clean diode that you'd expect with, say, the white, white LED, you'd expect about, as soon as you exceed about 2.5 to 3 volts, it lights up. Uh, what you're actually getting is a diode with a resistor across it. And in the case of this one here, it's 120 ohms it's measuring, which is quite low. Now, if I uh, were to test this LED, well, I'll test all the LEDs, with a current limited power supply. Let's take a look and see what happens. So I've got a very simple setup here. I've got an LED tester with some extended leads in it. And let's uh, put them in, let's put this lead in at 10 milliamps first and we'll test all the LEDs. So at 10 milliamps, the first LED lights up lights up quite brightly, I have to say. The second LED, the one that's got the equivalent of a 120 ohm resistor across it inside, doesn't light up. The third one does light up. So then I try upping the current a bit. I go up to, say, 20 milliamps, and we do the test again. So the first one lights up quite brightly. The one that's slightly dubious with the 120 ohm resistance doesn't light up. And the last one, oh, doesn't light up either. Well, that's good. If I get a good connection here, no, it's, uh, oh yeah, there it goes. So let's uh, go back and just double check that one. No, it's still dead. So now we go up to 50 milliamps. And once again, we'll start at the first one. And it lights very brightly. The second one that's dubious now lights, but not that brightly. It's not lighting as bright as the others. And the last one lights brightly. So what's happening here? Notepad. If you consider that when that LED with its 120 ohm fault resistance across it. When current flows through that circuit, we're needing at least about 2.5 to 3 volts, say, let's say 3 volts, before that LED is going to light. But it's got that 120 ohm resistor across it, which is leaking a lot of that current. So, if we do the maths, to get the 3 volts, uh, using the Ohm's law, I equals V, the voltage we want, 3, divided by the 120 ohms across it, equals, it's going to require about 25 milliamps to get that. And that tallies up with the fact it did not light at 20 milliamps. But it did light at 50 milliamps. So now we look at the actual arrangement of the LEDs in the 100 watt LEDs, and I'm not going to draw a 100 watt LED because that would be enormous. It's, a, it's got a lot of chips, but let's draw the equivalent of a, a 10 watt LED, which generally has nine chips in it. So that's the three circuits of LEDs in series, and all hooked up in parallel. And say this is a faulty one with the leakage resistance across it. When you apply a current limited supply to it, because this is leaking, these LEDs initially aren't going to light up because these LEDs are looking for the combined forward voltage of 3 plus 3 
plus 3 volts, so it equals about 9 volts they are looking before they're going to light up. This one, because this resistor is bridging this one out, we've only got 3, a rather unknown value, and 3, so anywhere above about 6 volts, these two are going to light. But that one's not, and none of these are going to light either. But as we increase the current, uh, as soon as the um, voltage exceeds the point across that resistor that this one can light up, it will start lighting dimly, but it will still be pulling the voltage down quite low. And then after that, the others, as the current's increased higher, will they'll light too, because as the voltage floats up. So these crap LEDs from China have lots of these dead LEDs in them with lots of random resistor values. And that's no good because ultimately it means that unlike a, a good quality LED where all these series circuits are perfectly matched to the exact same voltage given a, a small tolerance, then w when you supply it the full 3 amps across the 100 watt LED, then that current would normally be shared 300 milliamps per series string of 10. However, what's actually happening, because of all these random resistances, you're maybe going to get maybe... Uh, maybe you're going to get 500 milliamps through one circuit and 200 through another and maybe even 100 milliamps through another. I mean, when you supply the full current, there's a very good chance that most of the chips will light up, uh, although if you looked through dark glass, you'd probably find that some of the chips were not lighting up or, or just not lighting very brightly. And the downside of this is that the the effective resistances are just leaking a lot of the power that should have actually been dissipated as, you know, a lot of the current is just being wasted as extra heat from these dead LEDs. And the other ones that are were semi-working are now passing much more current than they're intended to and will die in short-term use. So um, the 100 watt LEDs, they're, uh, if they're not good quality and... People were saying, you know, the price of the LED indicates the quality. That does not apply. You can get vendors selling the cheapest, crappiest LEDs they can find at super high prices because they know that people will buy it thinking it's quality. So um, the only decent uh, vendor that I, I can think of now... Uh, because I got a lot of feedback in other videos as to good vendors, is a company called Sure Display, because they do show in their listing, uh, they show an LED being run at low current and all the LEDs are glowing at the same intensity. But there's no saying that they didn't pick out the best of the batch or that you're going to get one of that same quality. So it's all very hit and miss. I'm wondering... If uh, the 100 watt LED idea of, uh, you know, 10, uh, series 10 parallel is even a good idea at all. Maybe it's better um, dividing it across, uh, you know, instead of using one big LED, actually dividing it and uh, adding a little bit of extra circuitry to spread the load about a bit. But it's interesting, but uh, that is Coco the Clown's science of shitty 100 watt LEDs.